You want to find gold? I'm going to show you how to use geology to find it. As a geologist, I can tell you right now, there's not one speck of gold in those mountains or in the dolomite that's on the back of those mountains. Just bear with me. There's a reason why I'm telling you all this, okay? Now, knowing the geology is going to save you so much time because you can literally look at an entire mountain range and say, I'm 99% sure there's no gold in there. Yes, sandstone can have gold in it, but not this sandstone, and especially not the dolomite that's behind it. Now, the dolomite does host a lot of other minerals through replacement deposits, such as galena, which is where you get your lead and silver from, and sphalerite, which is a zinc sulfide. Only a few locations do these mountains actually give up gold, and there's a reason for that, and I'm going to teach you the geology of that, and I'm even going to tell you where these locations are at. Now, as you become more of an expert in this field of geology, you're going to start using different tools to help you localize certain areas that have gold or possibilities of gold. And that would be a geological map. This is one of many different types of geological maps that you're probably going to see when you're researching mines. Geological maps are great if you know how to read them and interpret them. There's a lot of information in there that will correspond with your USGS reports, and you can start localizing areas that might have potential gold deposits. And when I say gold deposits, I'm talking load gold. Now, what you can do is overlay templates of known gold mines, abandoned gold mines, over the top of these geological maps, and you'll start to see patterns forming. The pattern is gonna be where you start having all these thrust faults and contact zones, you're gonna see a lot of these gold mines are sitting right on it or right near it. This is a great example of a geological map that has a template of existing mines laid over the top of it. This is drawn up by a mining company that's been sampling good springs for the last couple years. Here you can see all the different rock structures and the fault zones that are incorporated, it, making it very easy to find potential load deposits. And you're also gonna start seeing patterns of specific specific types of rock types that have mineralization in them. A good example is down here in the Spring Mountain Range, you have a lot of dolomite, but in one specific area, you have a granitic intrusion. And if you remember, I told you one of the basic gold models is intrusion-related deposits. We found one of the richest areas in the Spring Mountain Range. I know you're asking, Jeff, we want to know exactly where all this gold is, the super gene gold that you're talking about. For those of you out there that don't know what super gene is, it's just basically secondary enrichment and some of your richest deposits have come from that. You have porphyry granite which is intruded on the limestone and what has happened is is at those contact zones you have a process called metasomatism taking place and a lot of the gold was originally in the porphyry granite and it migrated over to the contact zones and at those contact zones you have incredibly rich secondary enrichment zones of crystalline gold. And here you can see limestone, and then down here you can see the decomposing granite right here. See how soft that is? Well, right here, this is what the old timers were looking for. This, we tested, has gold in it. This is what they were chasing. Now, when we looked it up on the USGS report, we found out that this mine on the other side of this hill produced somewhere in the average range of two ounces per ton. But as you can see, the vein travels at a 45 degree angle. And then if you look up towards the contact zones here, right here, that's nothing but solid iron in there. Because we're gonna take a rock drill and we're gonna drill into this this uh, vein right here, and we're gonna sample in further because the gold we got was fine, some small little flakes in it. And I'm hoping the deeper we go, the bigger the pieces of gold we'll get, so. You want gold? You gotta earn it. I already see pieces of gold right there. Let's see if I can shake it down for you. Oh yeah, look at that. See all that? Not bad, huh? Look at that. Oh, now if that ain't beautiful, I don't know what is. There's some wire gold right there. I don't know if you can see that. But all the gold is in these little pockets like this in this. And there's lots and lots of it. Now, a lot of the gold that's found in that area is not associated with quartz. It's associated with this material right here, which is limonite. Limonite is just a journal term. Don't get caught up on it. You also have two other minerals called jerosite and plumbal jerosite, and those deposits are extremely rich too. They're usually found with a copper halo around the lens. Here's video that we shot many years ago of the mine that we're talking about. It's up on the hill overlooking Sandy Valley. Of course, a lot of the areas that have gold have these markings around them, and a lot of the halos 
that I described earlier of copper carbonates are around the jarosite and plumbable jarosite. Here's a good example right here where this pocket is very rich. You can find these all throughout the mine inside this one particular level. And right here is another good example. You can see the limonite and you can see jarosite and plumbable jarosite in there as well. And then of course you have these little halos of copper around these lenses. A lot of them have a tremendous amount of gold in them and some of them have nothing at all. So you have to sample them to find out which ones are the richest. Also when you do find a large pocket you'll see gold like this which is crystalline gold in nature. Very rich. The gold there is crystalline in nature. And I even made a video about it called Rich Gold and red dirt. But the problem is it's in pockets. Not all the limonite has gold in it. We found that the richest sections of these veins is where they level out to about 30 to 45 degrees. And especially if you see a halo of green talc on the outside of them. Tremendous amount of gold. Just masses of it. Wire gold, dendritic gold. It's all forming in there. And you usually see huge concentrations of bog iron in there as well. Now where you have replacement deposits in some of these areas, you're going to see, like I said, a halo of copper on the outside. The very center is very rich. It's like a pocket of gold. Now I'm going to tell you the name of the mines, but that doesn't mean I'm telling you to go run out there and dig up the people's property because these mines are on patent claims and the owner does not like a lot of people out there on his mine. But the name of the mine is called the Keystone Mine. You have the Keystone, you have the Chiquita, and you have the Oro Amigo. And not far from there is a fault system that created the Boss Mine. That's the one that has jerosite and plumbable jerosite. And some of the areas where they found gold inside of those lenses assayed out out at 117 ounces per ton. Try to get your mind around that. Try to keep in mind that this is for this particular district. Every district is going to have a different set of circumstances and a different type of deposition model. So it's not a, a one thing fits all. That's where you have to do your research and you have to understand your geology. The biggest question we get is how do I know what land I can check without claim jumping? Now for that I would recommend going to a place called mylandmatters.org. Now a lot of you guys have heard me talk about this in the past but we have some new folks out out there that aren't aware of this stuff. It's a really simple site. I'm gonna go over how to use it. All right, the first thing you're gonna do is click on the Land Matters. You're gonna see all the little links at the top. Look for the one that says Maps in the top left-hand corner. What you're gonna do is you're gonna click on that. That's gonna give you all the information that you need. This is gonna be the page that comes up and look to the right-hand corner. You're gonna click on Mines. Then under Mines, you're going to click on United States Gold Mines. When you click on that, it's going to open another tab that shows you all the gold mines in the United States. And this is a great reference because you can actually see where the trends and the belts are running. When you zoom in on that, you're going to get all these orange dots. Each one of those dots represents a gold mine and it has the name next to it. So that way you can look up the name if you need to. On the right hand side, you're going to click Topo. You're going to click Public Land Survey. Remember, this is a static system and you have to refresh it. Now hit the little icon and you're going to see all this information pop up. You're going to see all the commodities in the mine database. Click on that and the USGS report will come up with all the supportive information on the mine. What you're looking for is the commodities and materials information. If you see gold in these boxes as a primary and in the ore, you're on a winner. Next, you look through the entire page and find out if there's any additional information and comments that can support what you're looking for in the mines when you get there. At the top right hand corner, you're going to see map. Go ahead and click that. It's going to take you directly to Google Earth. It'll show you exactly where the mine is at in high definition. Now, if you go over to mindat.org, put in the name of the mine into the search box. When that comes up, you'll find all the information. And if you want to search other mines, the top right-hand corner is perfect for that. The information that'll come up is all the information on that particular mine. It's going to give you the location and it's going to show you all the mineral images that are associated with that, hopefully with photographs. It'll also give you information about the mine's history which is extremely important. And it's also gonna give you a commodity list that is very important as well. Gold has to be on that list. Go back to Land Matters and look at the mining claim section. Click on a state, we'll say Arizona. Now down in the bottom right hand corner, you'll see land status. Click on both land manager and public land survey system. Blue is state, yellow is BLM, and clear is private property. So what you're gonna do is click on the MRDS box, what that's going to do is bring up these little orange little buttons. If you click on it with the little I button, which is information, what that's going to do is bring up additional information about the mine back to where you were before. A detailed list of all the active claims is down below. Claim name, assessment year, section, and claimants is the people who own the mine. Go back to the map. 
Each square represents the square mile. You're going to cut that into quarter sections. Pick the quarter section that you're researching to find out what claims exist there so you'll know what land is available. In this example, we're looking at section 5, which has a total of 20 load claims in it. The area that we're interested in is in the southeast corner. If there are active claims in a section, the box will be colored blue for load and orange for placer. Hover your mouse over the section you're interested in. Then click the eye for information over on the right. You're going to look up everything that has a southeast to it on the right and the name of the mine to the left. You're going to use that information by clicking the county recorder's office. This will be the county recorder's office that the actual claims were filed in. Here you can request a copy of the map and the claim information of all the claims that you have written down in the section that you're interested in looking up. Find out what claims are active and their specific location. You'll use these maps to determine which land is claimed and which land is open and available. You can go to the county recorder's office in person or you can request it online. A lot of you guys out there who aren't familiar with the channel have been asking me, Jeff, why do you keep talking about red worms? What is that all about? Well, down here in the sump, which is the lowest part of the mine, we've punched through into a layer of clay seams that has a tremendous amount of gold in it. And we have a feeling we're sitting on top of clay layers that eventually punch into a cave system, a very famous cave system. And while we were doing that, we encountered a very large, unusual red worm. We were digging down. So and decided to come up and say hello. Now we did as much research as we could on what it could be. We still don't know. The closest thing we found was there's old research papers that indicate that during the time that there was an inland sea here, there was definitely some kind of large worm creature that was living down on the ocean floor, the seabed. If I got any paleontologists out there in the audience, would you please let me know what I'm dealing with? Because I have not a clue. Whatever it is that's down there hasn't seen the light of day for about 50,000 years, if not more. And I don't think it needs daylight to live. And keep in mind, there's two types of claims out there. There's patent and unpatent. The difference is, is the unpatent claim, you only have access to the minerals. That's it. You're just leasing the land from the government for the minerals. If you have a patent claim, you literally own the land. You could build a house on it and you put fences around it and keep private property on it. Unpatent, anybody and their uncle can come on to your claim. So keep that in mind if you are out there looking for a claim and you decide to buy one. And something else we hear a lot of is guys want to go out there and get a gold mine so they can start making millions of dollars. It doesn't work that way. Best thing to do is keep it a hobby. When you're filing for your claim, you're either going to file as a recreational use, which is hobby, or you're going to file in a commercial use. There's a huge difference between the two and a lot of money involved. Now, I know a lot of folks out there use Google Earth to try to find old gold mines and old workings, but sometimes that can get a little bit daunting because of the overgrowth. And there's a system out there that's going to make your job so much easier. It's called LIDAR. LIDAR stands for light detection and ranging. It's a remote sensing method that uses light in the form of a pulsed laser. It's sometimes called laser laser scanning or 3D scanning. The cool thing about LiDAR, you can actually see where the old timers were chasing these veins or leads as they used to call them. You'll actually see the prospect pits and the cuts. And so it'll be easy for you to draw out straight lines to follow those leads and to actually find either parallel veins or to find extension veins on that. It's a fantastic way to find hot spots that nobody else has even thought about looking for. For those of you out there that aren't computer savvy and you don't feel like making your own templates to overlay on Google Earth, there's a gentleman out there that goes by the channel of prospecting geologists who will be more than happy to make you one upon request for only 10 bucks. At least that's what it was upon the time of recording this video. And if you want to know step by step how to do it yourself, he even made videos about that. I'll leave a link down below so you can check out his videos as well. Now for you guys that live out in Australia, there's some sites out there that are perfect for you guys to find some of these old reefs and leads that these old timers were chasing. One of them is called Geovic and I'll leave a link down below. It's a fantastic site 
and it's free to use as well. And the nice thing about it is, is that you can upload it to your phone and use it in the field and actually put your locations in there so you know exactly where you're standing at when you're using it. Another one for you guys out in Australia is a site called Historical Gold Maps. It's a great resource to look up areas that have been prospected and mined in the past. This is put out by a channel called Goldfield Guide. I'm gonna leave a link down below so you guys in Aussie land can check it out. And by using it, you can actually find out where you should be looking to find your own hot spot. And last but not least, is a company called Avenza Maps, Victorian Goldfield Atlas. This is fantastic for you guys in Auslan trying to find out where the old timers had worked. Some of these areas are easy to spot, but others are not. And you can actually see where they had all these prospect pits, cuts, and trenches trying to find the leads and the reefs. Oh, and don't forget at the end of the month, we're giving away a brand new Gold Monster 1000. In fact, we give one away every month. And we're giving away bags of pay dirt from our drift mine with the red worm in it. Yeah! And of course, silver bars. You can't beat that. Now, if you want to get involved with that, all you got to do is look for the little icon at the end of the video that looks something like that. Click on it, make a $10 pledge, and you're in like Flynn. And I'll see you on the next video.